Not one we would think of as healthy, but they thrive on it. Horse dung is used to fuel the fire. Sensorin has decided that if I'm going to be part of the family, I have to dress properly and wear Adele, their traditional Mongolian dress. She's made this herself. It's padded and very warm. <laughs> How do I look? Nice? Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I feel slightly less like an outsider now. I didn't have a lot of time this morning. I usually look better than this. <laughs> when the wind blows out here, it hurts. The wind chill is lethal and it's not even winter yet. Every activity, and even your mood, is dictated by the wind. You can fight it, or you can just go with it. No matter how cold it gets, the mares okay. still have to be milked. It's a vital part of the nomad's diet. Fruit and vegetables are difficult to grow here, so it's their only source of vitamin C. Milking is done by the women. Sensorin's going to show me how. Okay. What's up? We'll see. <laughs> I can only milk when the foal has finished feeding. Pressure's on. A whole new frontier. <laughs> oh, I got a whole rhythm going now. Oh, yeah. I think they're empty. You want to check my work? Okay. <laughs> Hey, look, I can see. Uh -huh. That's good. Uh -huh. Okay, now what do I do? Mm -hmm. Poop. I just want you to know. Okay, what now? <laughs> it's freezing out here. And it's going to get colder. <laughs> it's mare's milk that will sustain the family through the bitter winter. Like at dawn, the milking has started again. It's a continuous operation. Every two hours in the summer, several gallons from each mare every day. Nomad's log day four here on the open tundra it's turned into because it's freezing cold here. Um, today doesn't seem as cold. Yesterday it was blowing a gale. And today there's very little wind, which makes the sun enjoyable. But at night, it's um, like you just, it's cold, period. You'll never be warm again, kind of cold. Cold to your bones. And my feet were like blocks of ice last night. Um, and my socks were too crusty to put on for warmth. <laughs> so pathetic. Um, yeah, really, really cold freezing cold and it's not even winter so the mind reels at the potential for frozenness there goes my neighbor Mencina see you later um it's I don't know how they do it out here forever I couldn't not strong enough I like uh I like my bathroom and I like um Privacy. I don't think there even is a Mongolian word for privacy because there's no lock on the little door here and people just, in a friendly way, in the most loving neighborly way, they just come right in a lot. Um, 
which is nice, but it takes a little getting used to. Stride out in any direction if you want to be on your own, but don't expect any landmarks. It all looks the same. I could walk for miles and miles and still feel like I'm in the same place. But I'm never completely alone. Back at the ranch, preparations are underway for the celebration we've come to join. Central to it is a horse race. In Mongolia, children are the jockeys. It makes sense. The smaller the jockey, the faster the horse. Henmade is a patient and kind teacher. He gives careful instructions on preparing a horse for a race. There are strong traditions and ceremonies woven into every part of it. The children are eager to learn. They all want to ride in the big race. And today, Henmade will choose who rides his fastest horse. So they've all got to put on their best show. Beck here is another of Henmade's grandsons. His talent makes him the obvious favorite. Henmade's Buddhist mantra is sung to give the horses speed. While the kids compete, I concentrate on improving my Mongolian. What's the moo? What's that? Uh -huh. Wait, moo. What's that animal? What's the moo? Huh? Paolo? Is that a Paolo? Paolo? Cow. Huh? What's buffalo? Uh, buffalo? What's the buffalo? Mongol uh, buffalo. buffalo. How do you uh -huh. say it? Sarlik. 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 Paolo? 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 Sarlik? Sarlik. Look what's happening over there. The riders thunder back towards us. That little one's holding on to dear life. It's very exciting. It looks like Bekir's one. These kids are truly impressive. So young, so capable. The nice thing about the way they feel about horses around here, or just from my observations, is that there's an enormous respect that when you realize something is um, so valuable to your day-to-day -day life, whether it be for herding or moving or getting around, that you have a real respect for it. And, um, and I think that that goes both ways. I mean, for these horses to just be allowed to roam around um, and they don't take off and leave never to be seen again, that's their respect returned, which is kind of amazing. You know, everywhere in America you see animals, you also see fences to keep them in. So here, it's really about... Um, just the love and respect that man gives to the animal, that they all stay together. It's amazing.
Around here, if you need a horse for work or racing, you have to go catch it. For this, they use an erga, a kind of lasso attached to a stick. The herders are picking out horses for the big race. They're looking for fast, strong, five-year-old contenders, the most difficult ones to catch. Can I see it?